Don't confuse Jesus with Karl Marx. I mention that because some have gotten confused in regards to Luke chapter 12 and verse 33, where Jesus says, sell your possessions and give alms. I mention Marx because there are a couple of manifestations of the idea that everything is economic and the workers need to unite and there should be a redistribution. A couple ways we see manifestations of that perhaps in our popular culture. At some point maybe you have read Animal Farm by George Orwell, a kind of a parody of the Russian Revolution, where the animals are going to be equal, they think. But it ends up with the pigs dominating things and the famous sign, some are more equal than others. In their attempt to redistribute, you just end up with a worse hierarchy. Or, I think about it like this, maybe you've experienced this. In the last few weeks as I've been at the grocery store as I'm checking out, the person asked me, would you like to donate $10 to help a needy family? I pause and don't know what to say at first. Sometimes I think to myself, well, yeah. And then I say to myself, well, why are you the middleman to do that? And then I say, if there's a needy family, I can help the needy family myself rather than a giant corporation being the middleman. No, we live in a culture where there's a desire to take and to redistribute and give to others. But we've noticed a couple things. One is, in the redistribution culture, it really doesn't eradicate poverty. As taxes arose with the Great Society from the 60s on, it didn't eradicate poverty in America. In fact, I guess you could argue that there is more poverty now than there was before there was the redistribution society. And societies that redistribute don't necessarily have less poor. So what did Jesus assume about the needy? Start with three basic things. One is, he assumed from the Ten Commandments, six days you shall labor and do all your work. People in Jesus' day worked in the fields. They made bread. They might have been small craftsmen. They worked. Here's the second thing Jesus assumed from Proverbs chapter 6. Go to the ant with sluggard and be wise. The ant gathers his food in the summer for the winter time. Jesus assumed that it was a sin to be a sluggard to not gather for the future. That was the world of Jesus. And it didn't occur to Herod or Caesar Augustus or Tiberius to redistribute to the needy. No, when they took taxes, they redistributed up to them. Yeah, they brought grain from Egypt to the urban poor in Rome, but mostly so they wouldn't riot. So when Jesus says, give alms, give what your possessions as alms, who are the poor? Well, two examples from the Bible. One is, there are people like the man in Acts chapter 3 who is physically disabled and unable to work. That they've come down with an illness, they've come down with a disease, they've come down with a, a, a case of something that, is, that has made it un, impossible for them to work. That's part of who the poor are. People like Bartimaeus, the blind beggar that Jesus meets. That's who Jesus sort of assumes that the poor are. But then there's a second question which arises. If the poor are people who would work and would set aside otherwise, but are unable to work, what's the responsibility of believers towards them? Well, just a quick thought, and then we'll wrap it up and look at some more on Monday. Remember the Old Testament, there were tithes that you're supposed to bring your 10%, your tithe in the Lord's storehouse. If you read Deuteronomy chapter 14, there's a tithe that you celebrate on. There's a tithe that you bring to the Lord's storehouse or Jerusalem. They also had a tithe, which was every three years for the needy. So every three years they would, sort of like we collected coats at church the last two Sundays, every three years they would do something special for the needy. That was a regular part, not something 
different than their tithing, but an add-on with their tithing. So, when Jesus says, sell your possessions and give alms, who's he talking to there? In fact, how many possessions did the average Jew in Jesus' day have? These are complicated questions, but the upshot of it all for today is this. Don't confuse Jesus with Karl Marx. This is your daily devotional for Saturday. I hope you're doing well. hope you'll pray for the services tomorrow and pray that the Lord open my mouth. Pray that the Lord fill people's hearts with the Spirit and spread the gospel and souls be saved. Pray for the church at all times and pray for God's kingdom to be manifest in our midst. God bless you as you serve him today.